Hi everyone, this is Aaron Murakami with a and Electronic Media at eMediaPress.com and the Energy Science and Technology Conference at EnergyScienceConference.com and we have a new website which is basically Vril.io for like input output it actually stands for Indian Ocean Territories but a lot of the tech companies are using IO because it's nice and simple easy to remember so again uh, a new website is Vril.io and that will be a website dedicated to all the um, physical products versus the digital downloadable products. Uh, we'll have the Lukowski multi-wave oscillators on there, the Bedini RPX sideband generators, and uh, we'll keep adding products um, from here on out. And so this right here is the pulse modulator for the MWO system where you can see the coils and antennas right there. And this is the model MD1CUA uh, pulse modulator. And this is basically the unit that has the high voltage supply in it, has all the filtering chokes and all the grounding uh, system inside to limit the uh, EMF um, emissions. Um, has a spark gap in there with all the caps and everything. And so it's all tuned specifically for these coils that you see sitting behind those uh, antennas on the left and the right. And so the primary operating frequency um, is between 700 uh, to 1000 kilocycles, which is 700 kilohertz to 1 megahertz, mostly in the AM band. Um, but there's a lot more frequencies that are created from the spark gap and that are uh, uh, emitted from the antennas up there. So this unit is really simple. It plugs into a regular um, 110 outlet. This is a common uh, plug that you'll see on most computers. Um, and so what we have is uh, a fan fuse here. This is going to disappear on future models because it's actually not needed. This is for, from the earlier uh, prototypes and we kept it on but those will disappear since again they're not needed. Uh, this is the main off and on switch. Um, this is actually a breaker. It's not a regular breaker because regular breakers are not intended to be used as switches. So this is a uh, magnetic hydraulic uh, circuit breaker and those are intended to double as a switch but also as a uh, breaker. Uh, this right here is the timer. It goes from zero all the way up to oh, maybe about 45 minutes I guess but most of the timers that we're putting in these are 30 minutes but 15 is circled because that's the recommended time to, to keep it on uh, uh, per time. Um, and then this right here is the Variac which is a variable AC um, uh, transformer in here which will take the 110 from the wall and you can dial it all the way down to zero all the way up to 100 percent which would be 110 volts or 120 volts going to the input of the high voltage transformer which is a uh, 9000 uh, volt 30 milliamp uh, uh, transformer and this thing is tuned these machines are tuned so well that these are actually outperforming um, a lot of the other machines that have 15,000 uh, volt uh, transformers in there, 12 or 15,000 volt, and we can actually get more output at the antennas just because it's more, uh, you know, the quality of the build is a lot better. And then also right here, we have a spark gap adjustment knob. You can go minimum all the way to maximum, and we recommend not keeping it on 100% or at max, you know, too much. That's just kind of, if you want to crank it up once in a while, but for the most part, we recommend about 50% spark gap and about 50% variac and that's good for most people. Okay, and then on the back side of these pulse modulator units, we have these uh, output jacks right here. And so if you saw the other video where I walked you through the um, Lakovsky versus Tesla method, uh, basically if you had the uh, Tesla method uh, wiring scheme, you would essentially have uh, one of the secondaries plugged in here and one of the secondaries plugged in here and then the center tapped uh, transformer would go right here to the chassis. But since this is the Lukowski uh, setup right here, this ground rod goes to one of the phases right there, as do both of the um, secondaries, and then the uh, opposite end of the primary goes to the opposite capacitor. So this is identical to what you just saw. And so it's color coded so you can't, you can't make any mistakes here. So also what we have is we have the uh, coil and antenna uh, arrangement here. These are powder coated with the clear coating. These are very, very strong. These are superior to the ones wired with string, which are not necessary. And um, this keeps it more uh, rugged, more solid, and it's also more hardy for shipping. Uh, 
these stands right here are easy to assemble. The whole thing can be put together with two people in about maybe 10 minutes. Uh, these come disassembled, so all you have to do is put one bolt in the bottom of the platform, raise this up where you want it, and then you basically, uh, these coils will already be attached to here, and so all you have to do is take these two nuts off and these two nuts off of these nylon bolts coming through, put these clamps on, have somebody hold the antenna for you, and but there's a whole assembly video showing you how to do that because there's a certain part on the ring that is sanded off so it can make contact with the uh, wire in here that's coming through here. And so it's really simple setup. This is the transmitter coil with the uh, primary and secondary on it. And um, typically you wouldn't want to put the primary that close to the secondary, but for the type of resonant effects that you're looking for specific to the Lakofsky uh, unbalanced method, this is exactly what you want. And the opposite coil only has a secondary. And so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, uh, fire this up so you can kind of see how it works. And... Um, uh, after that we'll show a few other things. Okay, so what we're going to do, uh, you can hear the timer clicking, I just turned that on. So as soon as I turn the on, on switch, uh, we're going to see the, the green light come on, you hear the fan going, that's blowing through the spark gap, and um, the red light comes on when the timer comes on. And so you can hear only at about maybe 2% on the Variac, it's already, you can already hear it kind of buzzing in there. So what we're going to do is Jeff is going to use the fluorescent tube and this is just to kind of show you some of the, the voltage available at the uh, terminals on those uh, brass balls on the rings of the antenna. So you can already kind of see that that's kind of lighting up. It's pretty well lit in here, so, so we'll, we'll turn the lights off. So we'll go ahead and open up the spark gap a little bit. It's pretty robust. So we can draw it all the way off the middle rings. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn it off. We're just going to use uh, uh, these different tubes. One of them, I think, is maybe a helium neon, maybe. We never knew exactly what. I think it's kind of pinkish, maybe. And the other one is. Uh, this is argon. Argon. So I think that's the bluish one. I believe so. And so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and kick that on. So I got the spark gap on minimum right now. Now the way Jeff is sitting where his knees are by the cables, um, this is just for demonstration purposes because we have limited room inside here. But typically what you want to do is you want to have the chair turned around facing the opposite way so your knees are not by the cables. So anyway, um, yeah, if you want to go ahead and uh, get the light there, Victor. Okay, and I got it turned way down. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it up here, and you can see that that tube. And if you want to place it maybe horizontal, halfway between both there, then you kind of see the corona coming off from around that. Uh, that outer ring. And I can't get too close with the camera. I just have to zoom in on it here. And what color is that other tube? Lit up yet. On the transmitter side. So this is the argon one, which gives kind of the blue light. And so th these are useful to, to look and examine uh, what the shape of the field is coming off of these. This is 
really good. I don't know if you can get a video of it, but it shows the striation really, really good in here right now. Yeah, you can see those uh, vertical lines uh, in there. That's showing the uh, chopped off and on uh, these striations. So if you take that one there and put it up to the uh, top ball, that's minimum spark gap. And so That Corona is reaching out, trying to move towards the ground. So, now the reason we're showing these colored tubes is because we're going to be making these available as well. Um, we're working with uh, uh, somebody who's a master uh, glass blower, and he can make any uh, gas combination inside of these tubes and he can uh, set them at different fill pressures and different ratios between different gases to either have them uh, light up uh, you know with high sensitivity which means even far away or um, you can have it so that they'll kick on when you get really really close that way you can really kind of see really well the field is, where the field is where it starts where it stops because if it kicks on with too much sensitivity what that means is you can just hold it five feet away and you don't really know what's, you know, how it's really shaped because it's, it's so sensitive. And so, um, you know, that's a consideration that most companies that are selling these with uh, high voltage type devices, um, they're not really tuning their gas tubes for that, but these, but these are. It's kind of interesting how you can see that that argon there is running on the inside of the tube by the antenna, like it's being drawn to it. Pretty interesting effect there. So again, we'll just show you a demo of the uh, voltages available here. You can deduce that by the length of the spark and so forth, but this is just kind of show the, the power output there. I mean, we have it turned up very much, and that's, you know, about a four-inch uh, arc. Ready. And being able to draw sparks all the way down to the center ring, that's showing that you have really good power output. So this is actually doing better than a lot of uh, people who have tried to build these with 15,000 volt power supplies. And for about two-thirds of the voltage, we can actually uh, outperform the power output because the tuning is so well.